Okay, guys. Welcome to our new filming location. I hope the lighting's a little better for everybody. This is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. <clears throat> is anybody familiar with that? It says, I have learned in whatever state I am therein to be content. You couldn't say chapter 4, verse 13, because I can tell you that one. <laughs> no, I had to back up a couple. Yeah, you had to come to before that. <laughs> I have learned in whatever state I am therein to be content. And we were just talking about being content. Well, we talk about that often. I was going to say, we talk about that all the time. Yep. Yeah. Um, One of the key words here, I have learned in whatever state I am therein to be content. He has what? Learned. Learned. Do we have to be taught as as children? Do we have to teach our children to be disobedient? As a as a rule, no. As do we have to teach our children to be unruly or? Loud. Um. Bad. Loud. Do we have to teach our children to be sinful? We do not, do we? Paul says, I have learned in whatever state I am therein to be content. Well, that's not something that comes natural to us. <clears throat> Being content is not something that we come by naturally. Never thought about that? All my thoughts, I'm sure it's crossed my mind at some point in time. All your thoughts, no doubt. You never stop thoughting. I never do stop thoughting. <laughs> I thought in my sleep. You do indeed. And I talk. I hear them. Yeah, I know. My thoughts talk. I talk in my sleep too. <laughs> okay. Does that make me thoughtful? <laughs> full, of, full of thought. I'm so very thoughtful. That spews out day and night. Again, I have learned in whatever state I am therein to be content. <coughs> Excuse me, Philippians 4.11. These words show us that contentment is not a natural propensity of man. Ill weeds grow apace. Covetousness, discontent, and murmuring are as natural to man as thorns are to the soil. Yoach. We need not sow thistle and brambles. They come up naturally enough because they are indigenous to earth. And so we need not teach men to complain. I wonder what comes so naturally to me. They complain fast enough without any education. But the precious things of the earth must be cultivated. If we would have wheat, we must plow and sow. If we want flowers, there must be the garden and all the gardener's care. Now contentment is one of the flowers of heaven. And if we should have it, it must be cultivated. It will not grow in us by nature. It is the new nature alone that can produce it. And even then we must be uh, especially careful and watchful that we maintain and cultivate the grace which God has uh, sown in us. Paul says, I have learned to be content. As much as to say he did not know how at one time. It cost him some pains to attain the mystery of that great truth. No doubt he sometimes thought he had learned and then broke down. And when at last he had attained unto it and could say, I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therein to be content. He was an old gray-headed man upon the borders of the grave, a poor prisoner shut up in Nero's dungeon at Rome. We might well be willing to endure Paul's infirmities and share the cold dungeon with him if we too might by any means attain unto his good degree. Do not indulge the notion that you can be content with learning or learn without discipline. It is not a 
power that may be ex exercised naturally, but a science to be acquired gradually. We know this from experience. Brother, hush that murmur, natural enough it be, and continue a diligent pulpit in the College of Content. So what's that saying to anybody? Be content. <laughs> be content. Um, is, it, is it easy to be content? It's not with Susie again this morning, don't you know? Were you with her? Yeah. yeah, you visit with her quite often. Yeah, I really, really enjoy your company. Um, and what happens when we're discontent? What's the, per what's the point? Why are we discontented? Usually when we're unhappy with something, right? A situation, our, mm -hmm. our possessions, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And she was talking about yeah, we often, God puts us, he tries those things through the fire, which he wants to refine right. and make more beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so we need to learn to look at our trials, the things that God puts us through, as him showing how much he loves us and wants to draw us nearer to him. You know? And we would find peace and contentment through that perspective, no matter how harsh the trial or how um, unwanted the trial would be. Well, and you're going through the, they're putting gold or silver or whatever through the, refri the, refining, the refining process. Mm -hmm. that's, that's hard on stuff. Um, you know, the, the diamond, you know, and they're cutting away, cutting away all this stuff. It, she points out, you know, when we, and, and again, I think the two go hand in hand. When we're fighting something, we're just, we're not content with it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that the more we fight against God refining us, the longer we're in that fire. Yep, yep. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and it's not until we quiet down and just receive with a thankful heart the circumstances. And I know it's easier said than done for our flesh, but, but trust, it's, it's, a, it's a manner of trust. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, it goes with the uh, seed thought you read this morning. Um, but it's, it's a manner of trust, showing God we trust him, that we know that he's only going to, has the best for us. And when we quiet down, then we can see the good things of it allow ourselves to meditate upon his word and be content with where he has us at the moment yep. uh, you know draw us nearer at that time versus us you know struggling to get out of it and you know we say how much the point. <laughs> we say how much how difficult it is today with everything in our face mm -hmm. you know with media and you know, all the screens and devices and just you know everything Husbands. But husbands, yeah, um, Wives. Yes. that they had just as much stuff in their face, you know, back in the late 1800s or yeah, late 1800s, early 1900s, just different forms, you know. Um, but yeah, just we need to allow ourselves to be alone and that quiet time with God mm -hmm. to, you know, be able to, to hear him. You know, like you were, you were saying earlier this morning, you were reading um, what blessing it was to, you know, find that parking spot or this or that, and you know, big deal. Well, you know, God doesn't always move in big deals, but if we accumulate all those little things that He does. Mm -hmm. That is a big deal, <laughs> you know. It, um. yeah, it's kind of, I think it's kind of like the, the, I don't know, the husband, the kid, they're hungry. Um, Mama's busy, but she she left a plate of cookies on the table for him. So the, you grab them, and you either grab them, oh, that was so sweet of her to think of us, or, oh, man, good, I'm glad these are here, I'm hungry. You know, there's a difference between the gratitude and 
taking for granted the cookies just appeared. Mm -hmm. We're taking for granted that somebody thought ahead mm -hmm. and thought of, of your need. Yeah. And I think you know, God is God is like that. We we'll bypass so many of his provisions for us. There's so many of his his ways of showing that, you know, I'm thinking of you mm -hmm. with just just something that happens or that's there. Or if we take the time to see spiritually or discerning or to be sensitive to to his involvement, how much we would be able to see how much he really loves us. Mm -hmm. The finest little detail. Well, we're all too busy. Yeah. We're all too busy to... So things are in the face. Yeah. To, to slow down and step back and to see what God is really doing. We're so easily discouraged and you know, dismayed. And, List didn't work out quite the way we wanted to, and instead of you know stepping back and really uh, you know, seeing what God is doing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just uh, Paul had to learn. You know, we all have to learn. Something we should desire to do is. You know, is, is learn to be content with where the Lord has placed us. Not that he, uh, you know, maybe he's not going to keep us there, but if he's, you know, he's placing us here for for a time and a season or in this situation or whatever. It's, right. and, and maybe we will be in a particular place or whatever for a lifetime. You know, it's, we just need to, as we so often to say, you know, serve God with, with all we have and you know, give Him the glory. Yeah. Father, we love and we praise you today and we thank you so much for your goodness, Father. And we do, Lord, I pray that you would help us to you know, learn to be content with, with where you place us and how you place us, and what you place us with. Father, I pray that we would you know, truly focus on you, your goodness. And so many of the, you know, the little things you do for us every day, Father, help us to recognize those. You've, you've been so good to us, Lord. We just give you the honor and the glory and the praise today. In your high name we pray. Amen. Amen.